to everyone for coming. We'll open it up with an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. I'll start off by saying, uh, uh, you know, we were pleased with uh, our effort and execution against Howard on, on Saturday. Uh, we were able to play a lot of guys, which uh, we think and hope will benefit us down the road um, as we uh, continue on in our season. You know, our players had the day off on Sunday, and so yesterday was our first opportunity to watch the film and put that game to bed and, and move forward uh, with our game plan and then our scouting report on Syracuse, uh, our upcoming opponent. Um, we saw a lot of good things on the film, but we also found quite a few things that we could do to improve, uh, you know, both mentally and then as well as some of the fundamental things that, that we were able to pick up with some of the young players that had opportunities to come in and play. Uh, we returned to the practice field yesterday for our prep uh, with Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse is a, a team that won 10 games a year ago, uh, a, a well-deserved ranking uh, going into the preseason. Uh, you know, well-coached program, you know, Dino Babers, who I've known for quite a long time in the business, is one of the best, uh, you know, offensive minds and has done a great job in building that program. Uh, much like us, they have quite a few guys from the DMV area on their roster, which I think uh, makes that game, makes this type of game interesting for us as our players have opportunities to compete against guys that they played against uh, in their high school days. You know, they return eight starters on the defensive side of the ball, which to me, having had opportunity to watch some of the film, you know, they're really, uh, really aggressive on the defensive side of the ball, really well coached. Uh, they, they had a shutout last week against uh, a Liberty team that, that has done some good things on the offensive side of the ball under Coach Freeze and the style of offense he runs. So to, to, to any time you get a shutout, um, that's a huge thing. And, you know, their defense uh, has the well, well-deserved reputation of being a strength for those guys. You know, on the offensive side of the ball, they're very explosive. They've got a couple of playmakers out on the perimeter. You know, number one, really dangerous wide receiver as well as a return guy. Uh, their quarterback, you know, played in some games last year. And, you know, is experienced in the system. They have two strong runners uh, in, in the backfield. So, you know, we expect this to be a very hard-fought game. Uh, we expect to get the best version of Syracuse. Uh, that they can possibly be going into this game. And uh, I know for us, it's important, again, to try to get a crowd there. You know, when you play in tight, hard-fought games, the crowd becomes a factor. And we hope that we can continue to get people interested in coming out to the shell to watch us play. And so, um, you know, our game captains for this week uh, will be Olua Sean, Olua Timmy, along with uh, Yende Ely and DJ Turner. They, those three will serve as our game captains going into the Syracuse game. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions. This is Mason Miner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now, don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. <laughs> Please uh, raise your hand and we'll get you the mic. Don. Mike, when you, when you have a game like you did on Saturday, how, how as a coach do you look at film and how do you judge how well your team played uh, compared to an opponent that might have given you a tougher game? Well, it goes back to us, um, the execution and how we executed our assignments uh, and so that's we always look at it from that standpoint you know I think it's really important you know in games like that like I said our starters were most of them were out of the game by halftime which gave our young players quite a bit of opportunities I think we finished with 86 gradable plays in the game on the offensive side of the ball and around 60 on the defensive side so uh, it gave us quite a few meaningful reps for us to to really coach up our young players. And there were a lot of things that we could we can improve on from a fundamental standpoint. And then there were some of the mental things, some of the mistakes we made mentally. So uh, we, we look at that tape just like we look at any other film from within 
uh, self-scout our execution, our ability to, to go out and execute the assignments with the techniques and fundamentals that we teach. And, and, and so there was some good teaching, good learning from a game like the game we had on Saturday. But we were also able to maybe gain a little bit of confidence in understanding that how we practice and how we do things hopefully will provide those type of results in the future. You know, Syracuse has a lot of talent on its defensive line. You know, it's, their defensive line is ranked as one of the best in the country, I know. And, you know, throughout fall camp, you talked about wanting to see a bit more aggression from your offensive line. What are you going to work with uh, those guys on, you know, this week prepared to face such a, you know, tough defensive line on the other end? Yeah, what a great challenge. You know, 94 and 55, their two bookends are really experienced players and, and have uh, played really well for those guys the last couple of years. And, when you watch them on tape, they both play with great pad level. Uh, they're both explosive, really long, long limber guys that you know are able to get off blocks quickly. So we've got to do a really good job up front of playing with the pad level and matching the intensity as we come off the football to try to establish you know our, our abilities up front to run the football, which is going to be important in a game like this. As you said, you know they pose a formidable opponent, and they're uh, again really well coached guys up front and, and their, their reputations are well deserving. We got our we got our work cut out for us, but I expect our guys to compete and play with the type of techniques and fundamentals that we teach to give us a chance. Dave. Now Coach, you talked about uh, defense being a strength for Syracuse. Uh, obviously you had a great defensive game. Do you see the possibility that uh, defense can be a strength for Maryland, the strength? Even though I know you're an offensive-minded guy, what did you like about the way the play defense played on Saturday? You know, one of the things going into our preparation of our season, and, and, you know, I feel like we have a little more leadership, a little more experience on that side of the football in terms of guys that have played uh, football around here, especially guys like Tino Ellis and you know, Antoine Brooks, and you know, even up front with you know Ola Sean and. Kieran Howard, They're, those guys are fifth year and fourth year players in our program and in our system. So we feel good about the, the experience on the defensive side. I thought Coach Hope did a really good job of mixing up the amount of pressure and, and, and mixing up the looks last week. And, and as I said earlier, uh, in reference to Syracuse, you know, no matter the opponent, anytime you're able to pitch a shutout, uh, those are tough to do in this day and age of the way offenses are developed and scheming. And so I was pleased with the effort. But again, there were a lot of things when you go back and watch the tape from a fundamental standpoint that we can improve upon. And you know, typically you see your biggest jump or your biggest improvement from game one to game two. And so I hope that we're able to see that type of jump. In, and that's in all three phases. You know, one of the things I didn't mention earlier, uh, not to skip your question, but you know, special teams, they are really strong in their special teams games and with their kicker and their punter and their returner. Uh, that's another one of those added weapons that you know we've got to deal with and make sure we can match and, and be really sound in how we uh, play special teams this week. Dave. Coach, what impressed you the most as you've had a chance to look at the tape? What impressed you the most with Josh's debut? And uh, moving forward, where do you feel he needs to make strides to be on track? Well, I think just continuing to see the improvement. You know, he started out a little slow, as we talked about. He missed a couple of throws early was late on one and then made a poor decision on the third medium. But to see the way he battled back, um, you know, they brought a ton of pressure. Uh, you know, the first touchdown pass, they brought six. We had five to block, so he had to stand in the face of an unblocked player and deliver an accurate pass, which he did to, to Dante Demas on the touchdown throw, which those are the types of things that really impressed me with him and his ability to manage getting the throws off, even though at times they were able to bring one more than we had to block. and and being committed to standing in there to, to, to deliver the, the ball when it needed to be delivered. So was pleased to see that out of Josh. Emily. This is kind of going off Don's earlier question, but when you when you have a game like you did, and, and obviously I know you mentioned the correctable mistakes, but, but as a staff on a broad level, do you lean into kind of the confidence building aspect or do you almost take it the other way, saying like, hey, it's not always going to come that easy? Well, it's the same way you treat good wins like you do good losses there's always the game within the game and I mean we focus on that I mean everything and most of the questions are about the results and we're more about the process of how we practice how we prepare how we execute each and every play and you know the scoreboard to us we try not to let that even come into play when we game plan when we correct from games when we win or games when we lose the key is to go in and get the corrections made for the fundamental mistakes or the mental errors that took place 
get those corrected and then get back into, again, one play at a time and developing game plans for our next opponent. On this side, Wayne. So talk about the process of understanding what Syracuse tries to do on offense, what Dino's system is, and how you relate that to your defense. Talk about the it's, not, it's a lot about process. You mean how we gotta play Syracuse's offense? Yeah, what they do some things that, that are somewhat innovative with the fact they don't really run plays and they run the areas sort of a Baylor look. How do you prepare your guys for that? I mean we watch tape, we take their tendencies, we match our fronts and coverages to things that take away what they do well. Um, you know, to me the thing that really jumps out about them is their ability out on the perimeter to get the ball out in space to number one who's a dynamic player in space and we've got to find a way to kind of take the air out of those perimeter screens and cup the ball and really do a good job of pursuit. I mean, you know, we've, we've faced teams like this before. Um, you know, he's gotten into a little more of the two tight end stuff. They're running the ball a little bit more. You know, what we've got to do is really worry about making sure that we're really sound and we mix things up, which John has done a great job of all camp long and mixing up his calls so that, you know, teams like them try to take advantage of your tendencies. And what we try to do is, again, mix things up with our coverages and our disguises and, and, and try to get 11 guys to the ball, um, take away what they do well, which is, again, the ball down the field vertically or the perimeter screens and then try to get the ball tackled. Patrick. And Mike, uh, with, with Shaq, I know we've talked a bunch about him throughout the preseason. How would you kind of evaluate uh, his first game as a Turk? And did he kind of give you a lot of what you were thinking he was going to give you, even if he hadn't necessarily played as much in the past? Yeah, I mean, one thing for Shaq, you know, this is the first Time he's played the outside linebacker position. You know, he was an inside linebacker at his previous place, and, and we've put him at our jack outside linebacker, which is a hybrid position. And so we ask him to, you know, be really strong against the run, set the edge against tight ends, and it's not necessarily a glamorous position on normal down and distance because you're playing tackles and tight ends, blocks, turning the ball back in. We thought he played really physical at the point of attack, which because of his size and strength, he's able to do those types of things. But the thing I was uh, really pleased with was his third down pass rush. You know, he's a big speed to power pass rush type guy. And we were able to get some hits on the quarterback. We were able to get some uh, sacks. I think we ended up with like eight sacks. And I know he played a role in pushing the pocket from the edge and containing, you know, an explosive playmaker like their quarterback from last week. So was really pleased with this first, uh, his first game as a Turk. Uh, we need to build upon it. Obviously there will be some things we can get corrected. But uh, he's been a willing learner and has been a great leader for us thus far. Don. Mark, you've talked a lot about Josh being a coach's son. Um, Allende Ely also is a coach's son. Yeah. And when, when you see the way he approaches the game, can you see that, I mean, that attribute in terms of the way he thinks out things? Or, or is it different being a linebacker than a quarterback in those kinds of situations? Not at all. You know, the Mike linebacker position is very similar to the quarterback position on offense in that they're the guys that really set the front calls and get us lined up correctly up front along with the free safeties making calls to kind of get the coverage part set. You know, Allende is a guy that has a high football IQ. He's a guy, and you talked about him being a coach's kid, obviously being around the game as much as he has as a child. and. Just really good understanding, really good instincts. Uh, he kind of reminds me a little bit, you know, with Jesse, and this is really my first opportunity. I saw him in the spring, but to see him play, plays a lot faster, a little more instinctive than even I would have imagined. And, and it kind of gives me some uh, reminders of a guy like E.J. Henderson, who always had a knack for being around the football and was really physical when he got to the ball. So those are great traits to have, and, and I was pleased again with the way he played last week, and we're looking to build upon his leadership, his toughness as a Mike linebacker, as well as his football instincts. Josh? Mike, the, the left tackle position still seems up to grabs according to the depth chart. Um, what did you see from both those guys, and did you kind of get any more clarity in the Howard game? Yeah, I mean, I think Ellis McKinney would be our MVP of our offensive line coming out of camp and going into the first game because he's a plug-and-play guy. I mean, I've been really, really – pleased with Ellis because he can play all five positions and he will end up doing that. You know, Jalen Duncan uh, did some really good things. Jalen will most likely start the game this week and 
I was pleased with how he came in and how he performed in his time. Um, we need to get, again, him as many reps. You know, he's a new starter. He's new to having this type of playing time. So uh, every rep Jalen gets, he'll be get better and be better for that rep. And But again, I can't say enough about Ellis McKinney and his versatility uh, and what he brings to our offensive line and giving us the ability to where he's a kind of a utility infielder, can play all five spots. Uh, and, and we're going to continue to find ways to get him on the field because he's, he makes us better. Wow. This program has, you know, prided itself on, you know, knocking off Texas over you know, the past, you know, two seasons and, you know, ranked team in that. How excited have, you know, you seen, you know, your team with the chance to knock off, you know, a ranked team in Syracuse? Yeah, we really haven't talked a lot about knocking off Texas or even Syracuse as being a, a ranked team as much as the next team for us. Um, you know, I know it gets boring and I say it all the time, but it's going to really start in with us. Um, one of the mindsets we've tried to instill in our players is that the opponent really doesn't matter. It's about what we do. Um, you know, it's proven that you lose more games than you win. And so our goal is to negate opportunities where we, we lose games because we don't tackle the ball, we don't run to the ball on defense, we turn it over on offense, we get a lot of penalties. Those are the things we can control. And so if we can control the controllables and execute at a high, late, a high, a high rate, uh, I really don't think it matters who we play because it's going to be about what we do. And, and how we do it. And so that's where all the energy gets placed for us as coaches and as a staff and our team. And we really embrace that concept because then you don't get into playing highs and lows and not, this opponent is ranked, this opponent is an FCS, this is a big game. Every game's a big game because we're only afforded 12 opportunities to do it. And we only get six at home and it's really important for us to, to take advantage of home field advantage. And that's where, again, I keep going back to hopefully being able to fill the stands with our, our fans, our students who bring the energy to the stadium. This will be a hard fought game. This is a really good team coming in here. I know our team loves the challenges, but we're more excited because it's the next opportunity for us to play at home. We'll take two more, Patrick. Mike, uh, I know they showed a, a couple two back looks in the second half, especially with, with Adams and Neal. Back in the day, that probably wouldn't have been that uncommon. Is it kind of a case of what's old is new, and do you feel like it's a little bit more of a challenge when you don't see that quite as often as maybe you would see it previously, you know, 10, 15, 20 years or so? Well, one of the good things I know for us on defense is because we're a multi-personnel offense, our defense has seen us with the two backs in the backfield. That's one of our strengths of our personnel. Groupings. We've got really good running backs. We've got great depth at the position. And so, you know, it won't be foreign to our defense to see two backs in the backfield and the things that come along uh, from an offensive standpoint of two backs. But, um, you know, as I said earlier, Dino's a good coach. Uh, you know, good coaches adapt to what their personnel is and what their strengths of their personnel are. And you build your system around your best five skill guys. And if they're four wide outs or their best five, I'm sure we'll see four wide outs on the field. If their two backs are both really good players, which we think they are, then I would expect you'll see some of those type of personnel groupings. And, you know, that's what good coaches do. They find their best personnel groupings, put them on the field, and try to get those guys the ball. Last one, Don. Mike, you've said it a number of times. You said it earlier that team improves the most between week one and week two. Why is that, and where do you feel the team has to make its biggest improvement to get a win on Saturday? I think that's because, one, you never know who you are until you play a game. And you know you can scrimmage all day long, and the familiarity with, which goes along with scrimmaging makes it really difficult because your defense knows your weaknesses. They know what you know your fleas and Achilles' heels are, and so they can exploit those things. Whereas when you play your first game, you can really find out, you know, are we who we think we are, uh, and then you make the adjustments off of those answers. Um, for my, for us, I think the the biggest thing from game one to game two on the offensive side of the ball is just making sure that um, our tempo, I felt like we tried to play fast and a couple of times we got ourselves into trouble. We had a couple of penalties when we tried to play fast and, and we've got to get those things corrected. On the defensive side of the ball, big, the biggest issue that came out of the game for us was communication. You know, we've got some safeties back there and Jordan Mosley and Antoine Brooks, along with Nick Cross who played a lot with Deion Jones, that those guys aren't really big talkers like they're really quiet Jordan Mosley you, you can't get them to talk very much but when you're playing that position and with some of the things we do and adjustments we have to make 
we've got to get our safeties doing a better job of getting everybody on the same page. And so, you know, those are some of the little things that we'll see. But to me, those are the two areas where we need to make the biggest improvement the fastest. Thanks, Coach. Thank All you, guys. Josh.